people there. Uh, down below this uh, rather lovely old iron footbridge, there once used to be a similar footbridge, except that one was slightly curved because it took people over the course of the Monklands Canal, which used to sit just there. And um, this kind of wider section was a basin of that canal. It used to run for about 12 miles from Glasgow um, at Port Dundas, where it met with the Forth and Clyde Canal, through Coat Bridge and all the way towards Calder Bank. The Monklands Canal was opened um, in the very late 18th century. Uh, I don't think it was opened in its entirety right away. I think, the usual story, I think maybe money ran out and so on and so forth. But it was eventually completed. As I say, it only ran for about 12 miles between Glasgow and Calder Bank. And its purpose was to bring coal from all the, the coal fields in the Monklands area into Glasgow. Um, it has now been mostly filled in. Um, Towards Glasgow, the course of the M8 motorway roughly follows the course of the old canal. Um, here at Coatbridge, it's been piped underground. Um, but a few miles in that direction, towards Calder Bank, where the canal began or, or, or ended, um, you can still see it, so it still it sort of exists in places. Um, the noise that you can hear behind me in this flow of water I don't think is the Monklands Canal as, as it's getting piped underground. I think that's more likely to be one of the branches of the canal because um, the first half of the 19th century, a number of branches were created. Um, it, they generally led towards ironworks and it, the branches allowed uh, iron, ore and coal to be taken in, to the ironworks for use and, uh, to be processed. Um, and I, I think that's probably what that water there is. And not far from here, we can actually see one of those branches. This is one of the branches of the Monklands Canal that I was referring to earlier. And just behind the camera there's a, a, a large basin. This branch is called the Gart Sherry, Hornock and Summer Lee branch. Th there were other branches. This branch would have led to the Summer Lee Ironworks and Gart Sherry Ironworks. Um, Gart Sherry Ironworks was I think the largest ironworks in Scotland, and it may in fact for a while have been the largest in the world. Absolutely huge concern, of which there is now absolutely no trace uh, at all. In this map of 1773, you can see the course of the Monklands Canal. You can also see Airdrie, but at this date Coat Bridge does not yet exist. By 1858, the first edition Ordnance Survey map shows a well-developed town, a town that grew rapidly to house, feed and water the many men employed in a rapidly growing iron industry. You can in fact see some of that industry right in the very heart of the town, between the main street and the canal, 
with the Atlas Brass and Iron Foundry and the Phoenix Ironworks, the latter shown, with all its chimneys, in an advert dating to 1905. All that smoke and not far from the main street. This aerial view of 1929 shows the canal flowing through the town centre. There's the canal passing under that curved footbridge. The fountain, which has been moved about a bit over the years. The main street. And the continuation of the canal now piped underground. At various places on that 1858 map, we can see some of the branches off the canal, like the previously mentioned Gart Sherry, Hornock and Summerlee Canal branch, which led to Summerlee Ironworks and Gart Sherry Ironworks. The Dandivan Branch Canal, which led to the Dandivan Ironworks, and the Langlone Canal Branch, which led, as the name suggests, to the Langlone Ironworks. The number of ironworks in and around Coatbridge was truly astonishing. My old blue guy to Scotland, dating to 1949, had just one small sentence to say about the town the chief centre of the Scottish iron trade, says it all. The following modern satellite view shows the position of some of them, but in fact there were many more. Each red dot shows the position of the named ironworks, Gart Sherry, Summerlee, Langlone, Woodside, Coatbridge, Dundivan, North British, Scotia, Waverley, Crown, Lochran, Calder, Carnbro, Loch Solach, and Calder Bank. Showing them all together, it's not hard to see why Coatbridge was at one time said to be the most polluted town in the country, if not the world with a layer of black soot coating everything outdoors, and night turned into day as more than 50 blast furnaces lit up the night sky. I think the first ironworks was set up in Coatbridge in the very late 1700s. I may have said earlier, I can't remember, but Gat Sherry Ironworks, it was on the go from about the 1830s to, I think, 1967, fairly recently. And I think for a period of time it may well have been the largest ironworks in the world, a fairly massive uh, concern. Uh, Summerlee had a shorter lifespan from about the 1830s for, I think, around about 100 years to the 1930s when it was uh, closed and was demolished. And um, the remains of the ironworks lay buried under the ground, under huge mounds of industrial waste for about 50 years before being rediscovered. And the remains of that ironworks is what you can see here at, in the Summerlee Museum of, Industri of Scottish Industrial Life. Pretty fascinating stuff. Just looks like a lot of stone and brickwork. It's hard to know what bits were used for, for what. There's various circular areas. There'll be blast furnaces here and all sorts of stuff going on. Very hard to imagine what this must what it must have been like when this was in operation all those uh, years ago, almost a hundred years ago, in fact. Yeah.
when you look at old maps and compare the image with modern footage, uh, that there's a huge change that's taken place in the landscape and in the round Coat Bridge and in the Monklands area in general. Um, all of the ironworks in and around Coat Bridge and uh, even the coal mines all had workers' rows of cottages used to house the men who worked in the iron mines or the coal pits. And it's a rather sad thing to say that did, uh, practically none of that housing remains. I mean, I'll show you lots of images just now comparis comparing the old with the new, and you'll see exactly what I mean. While there might be modern housing built on the site of these old rows, and it wasn't just rows, in some cases the, the, the rows of uh, housing formed squares, and you almost had the beginnings of little villages. But um, while modern housing is now occupying the area, it, the, the modern street layout doesn't echo what was there before. Uh, they've, as if they just wanted to totally get rid of any kind of notion that there was ever any housing on streets and squares ever there. Very sad, you know. I always thought, that surely we should have kind of tried to have, um, give a nod of acknowledgement to the past by at least retaining some of the streets and things, you know. But the, the, the housing was, in fact, um, not very well built. This is a row of um, cottages in the Summerlee Museum of Scottish Industrial Life. And as I said earlier, I highly recommend you pay this a visit. Um, it gives you a good idea of how the housing may have been for these workers uh, throughout time. There's various uh, periods shown. And this row is actually is modern. Um, it has roof guttering. And you might think, well, so what? But I'll show you a photograph just now of a, a row of um, workers' cottages, and you'll see that, as was usually the case, while it just looks like a modern, uh, sorry, uh, just a regular row of uh, cottages, there's no roof guttering, which means that rain would have just come straight off the roof, landed in the ground, and it must have created a mud bath for the men and women who were coming and going every day. And, you know, maybe... Maybe the fact that these properties weren't very well built is a good reason why they don't, don't stand anymore. Maybe it just wasn't practical to keep them. Far easier just to demolish them and forget all about it. This map shows the rows of housing occupied by workers at the Gart Sherry Ironworks in 1897. This was in effect the beginnings of another town, called Gat Sherry, with a school, laundry and an institute. Overlaying a modern satellite view allows us to see that both the ironworks and the village of Gat Sherry have been completely obliterated. It's the same at the Summerlee ironworks, with the rows of workers' cottages forming streets and a square called Meriston Square, a layout that has been obliterated with time and the unrelenting march of progress. A rather stark example of how industry and housing in the general Monklands area has been decimated may be seen just outside Coat Bridge where an old map reveals the Stanrig Oil Works, the village of White Rig, with its station, public hall and football ground, and the housing square at Airdrie Hill, all of which is now an utter wasteland. You know, it's really very hard to properly convey just how important Coat Bridge was in Scotland's industrial past. The whole, it, the whole of Coat Bridge and the surrounding Monklands area were just absolutely full of 
coal mines and ironworks and any number of other industries. It was iron from the many ironworks in and around Coatbridge, like here at Summerlee, that was used to build steam locomotives in Glasgow. And all the ships that were built on the River Clyde, that iron was crucial to allow all that development and growth to take place. This, um, this is a replica of the Vulcan, and she was built using iron from, I think, somewhere in the Monklands area, not that far away, and she was the first iron-clad passenger vessel in the world. That's how important this whole area used to be. And you sort of wonder how, what happened to all this industry? Where, where, where did it all go, you know? And I think there are just so many factors and it's just such a complicated picture. But I, I think the kind of general kind of picture is that steel started to take over from iron and the kind of focus of um, industrial kind of um, growth or the amount of kind of trade moved from the Cote Bridge area towards Motherwell. Uh, and I think in the end we all know what happened to Ravens Craig. I'm Eddie Burns. Take care.